Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thousands of memories are created and captured in each photo taken on your magical vacation. We proudly present Capturing Magic, where we help those moments live on forever. Hey everyone, welcome to Capturing Magic. I'm Steph from CapturingMagic.me and TheDailyDigi.com. This is episode 47, recorded on June 25th, 2013. I'm here with my co-host, Brittany Lovett, who can be found at BritishDesigns.com, where she has digital scrapbook supplies. Hey, Britt. Hi, Steph. Hi, everybody. We have joining us today, once again, Kim, once again, Kim Lund from documentlifenow.com. Hi, Kim. Hi. And you're also on the Capturing Magic team over there. Yes, I am. Right for us quite a bit. Yes. Great tips and suggestions for everybody on creating and capturing magic when they're in the parks. We ought to give an update, though, because last time you were on, you were trying to decide between Disneyland and Disney World. Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> and? <laughs> and we are booked at Disneyland for March of 2014. Yay! Yay! But I'm still not willing to commit. <laughs> <laughs> we're That's still funny. waiting. It sounded pretty official to me, but you're not. Well, now I'm reading all about the new, is it called My Magic Plus that's coming out yeah. at Disney World? Yeah. And I'm like, oh, we could be one of the first people. And so. Yeah. <laughs> Which could be good or bad. I know. Yeah. <laughs> and we will probably wind up at Disneyland. We got the perfect room. and You did. It's, yes. Isn't it at the hotel? Okay, you're... To remind people, and especially since, you know, today's our first show on the Touring Plans Network, we might have new listeners. So let's remind everyone, you're doing this for your daughter's senior trip. That's correct. And um, she was quite set on staying at the Howard Johnson's, um, the, the Hojo Anaheim. And um, after our last podcast, I got on the phone and called them and they had, they only have one queen suite and that's really what we needed for our family of five with three teenagers. And they had it available for our date. So I went ahead Yay. and booked it. Yay. Yeah. It's all about calling them direct. I swear. They're in, their in-house reservations at Hojo Anaheim are the best. Yes. And I wouldn't have called if Brittany hadn't told me to do it. So. Ah, yeah. Because they didn't. I mean, you, <laughs> yeah, you're, you saved the day, Britt. Because <laughs> they I'll didn't show that room available when you were checking online. Right, Kim? Correct. It was not available. On, it, it showed online, but said um, not available. So I didn't think that it would be available, but I called and they only book it online be, or on the phone because there's only one of them. So. Oh, and it's yours. Yeah. Yay. It is. So, and they awesome. Have, they have Keurigs in the room. That's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Yep. Okay, so we have a few news items this week that we wanted to talk about that relate to creating and capturing magic in the Disney parks. The first one is the Instagram added video. Yeah, it's cool, right? Pretty, you know what? I haven't checked it out yet. <laughs> I've been on there, but I haven't done the little change the settings so that I can see video on there yet. So it's, oh. they still all look like photos to me. You can't, like, push play or whatever? I, there's no play to push. Oh. Yeah. I didn't know you had to update anything. Mine just started working. I don't know. Oh, really? Well, I updated my app. Yeah, I haven't updated the app. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I need to do. I haven't updated the app. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, it's not in the settings. You just have to do the latest update, and then it's automatic. How oh, can you it. not update the app? The I know, that little right? Number shows up. I'm updating. <laughs> I know that little badge. It can't. It drives me crazy. It yeah. drives me crazy too. Developers like me love people like you, because <laughs> I want people to get my updates. I don't like people like me that <laughs> don't <laughs> update. Oh, brother. Yeah. So tell us, Britt. Do you love it? Hate it? No, I like it. Um, I it. Uh, it took me like the first time I tried it, I was like, 
a little confused because you have to like hold the button down to record and I'm not used to that. I'm used to like you push it and it starts, you know? Right. So I was like, why won't it start recording? And then I realized, oh, you hold it <laughs> and it will go. But I like it. I like to see people's videos. I'm always excited when I'm going through my feed and I'm like, find a video. And then I found one from a friend of mine that was in Disneyland and I got to like see this video of Disneyland. It made me so happy. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I'm so excited for my next Disney trip so I can share videos. Like it's just so cool. Yes. I've I'm, always wanted it to do that. So I was really excited. That's I'm excited to see some Disney videos. I will admit I'm very excited yeah. to be able to go through my feed and hear the music from the parks. And yeah, you know, really. it, was, it was a video of the Jungle Cruise and it was just like a video, a really, you know, quick video of the skipper and then kind of looking out and I could like, it was that, that noise of the like cicadas and the, the boat engines. And I was just like, Oh, it's just like, it's so fun to hear all of that yeah. <laughs> and see it. So yes, it's magical and it makes you happy. It, How can you not? Does. Made me really happy. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. It's interesting to hear different people's perspectives because we, on the Digi Show, which is my other podcast, we talked about it too, and they're not as excited over there about it. So really, why yeah. not? Um, well, I think it's the way that it happened for Katie. She was in a sitting in a waiting room, and um, all of a sudden, it. She just did the update, didn't know about video or anything, and all of a sudden, it started playing video, and she was. <laughs> she, a little embarrassed, I think, uh, but, and, and some people like change and don't like change for me where I'm mostly following Disney people on the capturing magic Instagram feed. I know that most likely the, the stuff I'm going to see, the video clips that I'm going to see will be Disney related. And that makes me happy. I'm okay with that. Yeah. If it were my personal feed, which I don't have a personal Instagram at all, but if it were and I was just following people and I was seeing video of the dog barking or video, you know, I wouldn't <laughs> be as happy about that, I'll admit. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I like it so far. I mean, we'll see if it starts to get annoying or whatever, but I figure if I don't want to watch it, then I just don't push play. Like if it doesn't look like something I'm going to want to watch, then I don't have to watch it. Right. Right. And I think there are settings that you can set to make it so that it doesn't automatically play. Did you have to go in and do that, Brit, or was it auto? Was no. It, okay. Mine doesn't automatically play. Okay. Mine, I have to hit, I have to tap it and then it will start to play. I okay. think, I'm pretty sure. Um, I mean, I have only seen a few, you know, I've, I've done like two videos of my, of my own and then I, I'm pretty sure I have to tap them to get them to play because they just look like a picture until right. I tap them. I think it's if you stop on the picture long enough, it'll start playing. Oh, okay. If you're not scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Right. Yeah. Because ah, I just okay. scroll. And then I think I read Katie's blog and I went, oh, <laughs> well, I never stop on a picture. I just scroll, scroll, scroll. And my yeah. settings were automatically set to play if I stopped. I just never had. So, yeah, oh, I'll have to check into what my settings are, I guess. Um, but like I have a really good friend who is a really great photographer and his videos are very cool. Like he uses it in a very interesting way. Like it's they're, they're almost like just a moving photograph. It's very cool. So yeah. I love it so far. Yeah, I think I'm go I think I will once I ch once I update my app so that I can see video and I really should have done that before this podcast but uh, <laughs> so that I could see. I could imagine that in my Disney feed I will love it just because yeah. I can't imagine not loving par video from the parks, really. Just in yeah. small little clips. I don't have to watch. It's not going to be know. long. Yeah. It's just super short and enough to get some magic in my day and move on. Yeah. The, the one, like I said, I've only seen the one Disney one so far in my feed, but it just, it seriously made me so happy. Like I showed Josh, I was like, Oh, look, and yeah. Scarlett loved it. And you know, it, I was a little bit uh, ridiculous about it, but <laughs> it made me excited. Cause I'm like, I get to see more of that. So right. the, you know, the few vine videos that people have been posting on Twitter that I've seen through, come through my Twitter feed. I've really enjoyed those as well. So I can't imagine, you know, the Disney videos that have come through, I can't imagine not liking the Disney videos that are going to come through my yeah. Instagram feed. Yeah. Great. It's just okay. So we are official on the touring plans network. This show should mark our first show on the network crossing our fingers. All goes well, right? Right. Pretty exciting stuff. So welcome to any new listeners out there. We're excited to have you. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun stuff. Super exciting. Yep. Okay, the other piece of news is that they announced on the Disney Parks blog this week that there is now the option at the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique to have a Princess Sophia makeover. 
which is brand new. And it's not an upgrade package or anything. It's just another option. So instead of doing the Cinderella hairdo or one of those other hairdos, you can do the Sophia the first. That's my understanding is that it's not an additional upgrade. And then they also talked about the mermaid makeover, which they've been doing for a long time at the Pirates League. Yeah. And the Jake and the Neverland Pirates makeover that they also do at the Pirates League. So those aren't really new, but they talked about them. So we'll mention Yeah, maybe they're just because they're somewhat Disney Junior related. I don't know. But that's why they talked about them with the Sophia. Could be. I don't know. But this, the picture that they show, it looks cute, the new Sophia stuff. Yes. My daughter, when I told her about it, was very excited. She's six, my youngest. And she said, oh, that would be so fun and have a tiara and an amulet. And I'm like, an amulet? Wow. <laughs> I'm impressed. <laughs> but oh. it's all from the show, all from watching the show. So... Yeah, it's it sounds like a lot of fun, and it's I all I I wonder if maybe one of the reasons that they are talking about the Pirates League is because I know at Disney World it's hard to get a reservation for the Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique, and they have two of them mm. now. They have one in Downtown Disney, and then one at the ca- Castle in the Magic Kingdom, but they're booking about six months out, and it's Whoa. yeah, it's hard. Where at Disneyland, you can go the day of a lot of time. Yeah, and get a spot. And get a spot right there in Disneyland by the castle in the Bibbidi yeah. Bobbidi Boutique. So I wonder if that's – I know when I called to try and get reservations for my daughter when we went in De- December, they tried to sell me on the Pirates League Mermaid makeover instead since it was all booked up. Oh, okay. So that's like maybe if you can't get into Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But Disneyland, it's not usually a problem, which is great. Okay. The tiara is really cute, I think. It is. It's it's like, yeah, it's cute. It's like a Princess Sophia tiara. Yeah. And that's fun. (laughs) And her hair is cute, too. Her little kind of rolled braided hairdo thing. Especially if you're not a fan of the, like, slicked back. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Eyes pulled back tight (laughs) bun (laughs) that they do, you know. Yeah. It's kind of a cute option. It is cute. It's really cute. We can put a link up to that in our show notes too. So people can go to capturingmagic.me forward, yeah, forward slash four seven, just the numbers four seven. And that will take you to this, today's show notes for this show. Okay. So our discussion topic today is that we are going to be talking about all of the different ways there are to document Disney vacations. Once you come home from your trip, all of the different things you can do with your photos and then also sharing some of the things that we've done. I know Kim is really, really good. You're probably the best person I know, Kim, about coming home and actually taking a whole vacation and compiling it so that you can look back on it later. And you've done it for every vacation, I think, that you've been on to Disney. I think I have. Well, I consider us starting having gone in 2000, even though there were a couple of trips before that, but 2000 was when I found scrapbooking. So even though I haven't scrapbooked every trip, yeah, I, they're usually in albums within a month of when we get home. Yeah. That's incredible. Isn't it? I, I wish I was like that. I know. I mean, I still document, but I don't like actually finish my trip like Kim does. It's awesome. Yeah. Kim really does a great job of documenting her trip from beginning to end. And you can go to documentlife.com. Com, documentlifenow.com. Now. Did I say that right? <laughs> documentlifenow.com. <laughs> yes. And see, you have posts all throughout there because you've had that blog for forever. I have. The, and you always show how you're documenting it as you go through the process. And there's a link on the to- on her little um, bar at the top that says my Disney slash Project Life album. You can go through and see all her Disney stuff through that link. Yes. Well, that's last year's album. If you want to see oh, yeah. clear back, I think you have to go to the vacations link. Okay. Vacations it's and photos. It's yes. also on there. And it's cute. You have it. You updated your, your like banner. I cute. did. I got a professional a cute new picture. <laughs> I know it's cute. It didn't used to have a picture of you like that. And now it's so cute. Thank yeah. You. I love it. Yep. Okay, so Kim, share with us kind of let's let's hear your history and how you've done, how you do, you've documented your Disney vacations. Okay. 
Um, well, I think part of the reason it's easier for me to document is I don't go as much as you two ladies do. Um, and we, I usually spend almost nine months planning the trip before we go. So it's like this whole year long process almost of planning and then going and then documenting. But, um, we went for the first time in the year 2000. That was, um, my youngest was 11 months old at the time. And so the older two were like five and seven almost. Um, and that was when I discovered scrapbooking and, um, took 10 rolls of film. And that was like, I took it in to get it developed and they were like 10 rolls all at once. And, um, so that one was my first scrapbooked. Um, we went back in 2004 and let's see, I, I should have brought my notes. I had them. <laughs> that one was just photo albums. And then I made a trip report album that went with that one. And then 2007, we about, these are all Disney World trips. Um, we went and I did, I was digital by then. So I did a digital album with the photo album. 2009, we went to California and I did a digital album and a photo album. And then last year in 2012, we went to Florida again and I did Project Life, two albums. Wow. Yeah. So huh. incredible. Two, when you say two albums, you did two Project Life albums? Yeah, I filled two Project Life wow. albums. <laughs> so. Wow. That's pretty amazing. Let's jump back to the one. There was one year that you said you did, um, I think, an album and a trip report. Is that right? Yes, I did. That was 2004. Yes, I. that was the only year I hadn't like pre-planned how I was going to document the trip when we when we got home. And so while we were down there, I just bought some photo albums. I kind of went down thinking I'd buy a scrapbook and scrapbook supplies and ended up just buying photo albums. And then I wrote a trip report that I posted on the Diz boards and I ended up taking that, um, sizing it into an eight by eight canvas and, um, putting that in a little, uh, stamping up album. Maybe I don't know. Okay. Small album. Okay. So that's what I was wondering is if you, cause I know that you've posted pretty thorough trip reports at, on the Diz boards in the past. And so did you just take those posts and print them up? Is that how you did it? Or did you copy and paste them into a word doc? Yeah. Well, I copied and pasted them, I think into Photoshop. I think that's how I got them the right size. Um, I just created an eight by eight canvas and then did my text box, which sounds really long and hard to do <laughs> now that I'm, yeah. I mean, I would have had to have figured out where the text ended and everything, but uh -huh. I think that's what I did. Um, so maybe not, I don't know. I can't remember actually. Maybe I just did, <laughs> maybe I just printed it at home. I'm not a big one on printing at home because my ink has always cost so much. Yeah. Um, and I can't remember if it's on just regular typing paper, if it's on photographic paper. So, mm -hmm. And then you did a digital scrapbook album to go along with that? Uh, that year I just did photo albums okay. with it. Okay, so just sliding. What kind of like, photo albums? I just got the Disney Slip In Your 4x6 Picture album at World of Disney. The early pocket scrapping. Yes. <laughs> yeah, just putting I your photos in. in pockets. Yeah. Well, and I had some um, cards where I wrote down like what we did that day or I'd slip in postcards and stuff. So not quite pocket scrapping, but a little bit more than just a photo album, too. Right. I think that's pocket scrapping. Yeah, I think it is, too. <laughs> Whatever you want to call it, that's fine. I call it pocket scrapping. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever works for me. And do you find that you get those out and look at them like the old, your older photo albums or yes. they just, yeah. Yeah. My kids, their favorite is the trip report album. They love to go back and read all these little details that they'd forgotten about the trip. Cause they were only, Oh, well my youngest was only four. So they were all younger than 10 at the time. Oh um, yeah. So they like that. And my project life album, it's very, very detailed. Like I probably have thousands of pictures in it because I would put six or seven pictures in one slot. And so wow. it's kind of fun too. Yeah. So. Fun. So you, See, I always like to hear if it's something you enjoy after the fact and get out and look at a lot, because to me, that's a successful way to document. Because for me, if I document in a way that I'm not enjoying it, 
after or my family's not looking at it or whatever, then I'm like, well, what was the point? <laughs> you know, so I always like to know if it's something you feel, felt like was a successful documentation, you know? That's a good point. Yeah. That does. And I was just thinking, yeah, the albums that I did more of a scrapbook style, they look out less than the ones hmm. that are more words and memories, um, which is plain old pictures beside it. Interesting. That is yeah. interesting. That's just, that's kind of what I'm drawn to, too, though. So maybe I've just rubbed off on them. So <laughs> so the the album, I think it was 2004, you didn't know ahead of time how you were, is that the one that you didn't know ahead of time how you were Right, going to do it? yeah, I just, I've always gone into a say, I'm going to digital scrapbook this one, or like last year I knew I was going to do Project Life before we ever went on the trip. And that one I just, I, I was a paper scrapbooker, and I was kind of growing, um, dissatisfied with it. And mm -hmm. I did switch to digital within about two months of when we came back. And I think I just wasn't real motivated to keep memories that year, but it turns out that's the one they pull out the most. So, so you did your trip. How soon after coming home did you do your trip report? Oh, very quick. I would say I had the trip report written within a month. I may not have posted it all within a month cause that just, they seem to drag out for years on the Diz boards. <laughs> um, so I may have taken a little longer to post it, but I know I probably had the rough draft done. I'm a really fast writer. You are. I am. It's I pretty just, amazing. Getting... You're smoking. Well, when it comes, <laughs> I have to get it out and yeah. I can't stop until it's out. So, yeah. And the faster you get it written, the better you'll remember all the details and yes. yeah. But I'm not saying that that's what I do. I just <laughs> I know that that's true. So <laughs> yeah, I was kind of thinking, Britt, when you said you know it's it's a successful method of documentation if it's something that you get out and refer to. And I'm thinking of all of the digital scrappers I know that scrap beautiful Disney layouts and then never print them out for their family to yep. enjoy. They just sit in the computer. And for me, well, I don't know. It depends on what you consider successful documentation or enjoyable documentation. But for me, that's not the point. The point for me is to, for our family to look at it and remember those memories and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. And if it's just sitting in my computer, I mean, if you look at it on your computer, that's yeah. great. Like if it's something you can pull up and look at a lot through, you know, whatever. I don't know if you're like we always like we could look at pictures through our Apple TV sometimes and stuff. Yeah. So if you're doing it that way, fine. But I am guilty of this. Like I scrap a lot and don't print as much as I scrap. And so those layouts are fun and it was fun to create, but it's not really something that my family is enjoying. So, yeah. But yeah, yeah. I think I agree with you that it depends on what your goal is. But I think for a lot of people that are documenting Disney stuff, it's really so that they can have those memories down and be able to refer back to them. Mm -hmm. And so even if it's, you know, putting them on a slideshow as a, for your screensaver or yeah. on your TV or, you know, whatever the case may be. There are so many TVs now that have um, SD slots or that you can mm -hmm. hook up to a hard drive over Wi-Fi or a USB port that you could put a slideshow on. And then every time the slideshow comes up, it's all your Disney pictures or scrapbook pages. Yeah, even if you're not scrapbooking or, you know, making some sort of album, even if you, like, take those pictures and put them on a digital picture frame or something, like, getting them out of your camera or out of your computer and are displaying them in some way or have, you know, your family can look at them in some way, then I think that that's, to me, that's what successful documentation is. I agree. Totally yeah. agree with that. So what about, let's hear about your planning that you do, the years that you've known. What? Yeah, you're good at this, Kim. You're really good at this. <laughs> she, Kim knows like what, how she's going to document before she goes and has it all ready to go. And that's probably why you're so successful yes. at coming home and finishing it. I would agree. Well, and I think it also kind of shapes what I take pictures of while I'm there too. Um, because knowing I was going to do it project lifestyle, I actually incorporated some of the project life philosophy into my picture taking. And I took pictures of us at our condo sitting around having dinner, or, um, we like to sit on the fenced in or the screened in porch and write in our passporters at night. And I took pictures of that. So, um, yeah, I think knowing what I, having an idea of what I want to do before I go 
does shape what I do. Um, I'm big on, I do like to write. So I always take something to write notes in every night. Um, and I just tried to pick something like last year. I was so excited to start project life and I didn't start it until we went on the trip. And then of course now that's like all I do. Um, and I rarely actually scrapbook anymore. Um, it all counts. Yep. Yes, it does. I, I actually find it much more valid. I'm, I'm documenting more this way. Well, and I never, I was one of those awful people that scrapped and never printed, um, mm-hmm. before. So at least we've got an album now and the kids pull it out all the time. And I think of all those hundreds of layouts I wasted because my computer crashed and they're gone. And so, yeah, but yes, I'm big on, um, knowing what I want to do and doing what feels good to me, um, and not forcing it. So yeah, there, and there were three trips where I just did photo albums in addition to what I enjoyed because, like I said, they're not big on those digital scrapbook albums, but they'll pull out just the photo albums and look at it. So, yeah, I found that um, if I, because I, I do that when I get back to is make a photo album. That's what I do first usually because I want those pictures out of our computer and out of the digital <laughs> realm and into our hands. And I know that Scarlett can look at them more if we have a book. And I, we look at that book way more than we look at any of my big scrapbooks. So, and I mean, it's the simplest thing. It's just a photo album with four by six photos in it, but it gets a lot it, of love. It does. <laughs> we which love is, it. Yeah. Which is great. Oh, so what kinds of things are you planning for, Kim, then, when you're planning how you're going to document your trip? Oh, I think about, I, I do a lot of thinking about what pictures I want to take, but I don't, I'm not real good about, like, making lists of pictures I'm going to take, because I never will do that. But I, I do, I like, last year I read, um, oh, Disney Tourist Blog, is that the name of it, Tom yeah. Brickers? Yes. Yes, I saw you had just had Sarah on, I'm yeah. so jealous. I know. Um, <laughs> so fun. It was, yeah, so fun to have her on. Yeah. Um, so I did a lot of like looking at his pictures and I knew I would never get to that quality, but it kind of gives you an idea about what you want to capture. Um, and I think about what equipment I want to take, um, how I'm going to waterproof that equipment, how I'm going to provide power to that. Um, and then like I always, I always talk on this show about the passporter, but I'm big on having some way to write down my memories and I like Passporter because it's got fill in the blank stuff but then last year I wound up just using a notebook and doing like a stream of consciousness notes every night so interesting yeah is that how you has that how you're able to write trip reports is based on all your notes because for me I, I have a hard time coming back and writing a report because I don't remember stuff it all blurs I don't, together I don't do what you do right so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think that's it. I I do. I write down and I save every single receipt. Like if I buy a Mickey bar, I get the, and they're like, do you want the receipt? Yes, I do. And I save it. And I, and they're all my project life album right now. Or, um, from the trips where I didn't do physical albums, I still have like rubber bounded package, (laughs) rubber banded packages of all our receipts from those trips. You can't even read them anymore, but because they fade with the new paper that they use on those receipts. They fade pretty yes, quickly. They do. I know that one of the other things, at least this past year that you planned out, was character autographs, how you were going to do that. Is that something that you've planned ahead for every trip as well? I think so. I know that, like, um, in 2004, I made the kids um, – autograph books. I think I just went to Walmart and got like a little chipboard album kind of thing and decorated it for them. Um, I know when we went in 2009, Oh, I had a little, I don't even know what brand it is. It was made by one of the scrapbook companies and it was like a little autograph album thing. My kids have never been real big on getting autographs though. Um, so it hasn't. And like, I know that a couple of times we've made a real conscious effort not to get the autographs because I think that the character interaction is better if they're not like, where's the book? Let me sign it. Okay. Take a picture. Let's leave. When you don't have that book, they play a little more Mm -hmm. uh, and interact a little more. So, and I think after 2004, I kind of realized we weren't doing anything with the autographs. Now last year 
when I did Project Life, I'd use the Project Life cards and came home and slipped them right into the album. So I did have something to do with them. But before that, they were just, I'm sure they're sitting somewhere in my girl's room and buried and stuff right now. So, yeah. Uh, okay, so what do you know what you're going to do for your next trip? I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm torn because I love Project Mouse so much, Brittany. <laughs> um, but I'm kind of, like, that's what I'm doing for my every day now. And so I'm like, I don't know if I want to do a pocket scrapping Project Life kind of thing or if I want to do, I'm kind of liking photo books right now. I'm really loving 8 and a half by 11. Um I was eight and a half by 11 paper scrapbooker. And so I'm gone back to it for a vacation album I'm doing this year and I'm loving it. So I don't know. I'm thinking well, of you a have photo time, album. So. You do <laughs> yes, have plenty do. of time to figure it out. I'm like, let me look. I yeah. probably have like 200 days left. So I have my little countdown on my phone all the time. Yay. It's 262 days until we leave. So yeah. <laughs> Somebody come out oh, with something so really good. cool before then. So. Yeah. yeah, you never know what will be you don't. out by then. You don't. Britt, do you want to explain what Project Mouse is? Sure. So Project Mouse is just a simple way to document a Disney trip. Um, the Krista Celine from Celine Studio and I um, partnered together to create Project Mouse, and it's just basically pocket scrapbook, digital pocket scrapbook supplies um, that uh, you can just use to document all kind of facets of your Disney vacation. I mean, we kind of, and it's not really end it. Like, we never really stop making project mouse stuff. We have, we always have something in the works and we always have some sort of new idea, um, of something else we want to make because we want them for our own albums. Like we always think, okay, what, what, what do we want for our books? And then we make them and <laughs> that's what ends up being project mouse. So, um, I don't know if I'm describing that yeah. very cl clearly, but it's all digital. So it's, um, you can either print them out, uh, if you are a physical pocket scrapbooker or um, you can use them in Photoshop or whatever program you're using to do a, a digital pocket style page, which is what I do um, for my my latest trip that I'm doing my whole thing, Project Mouse or pocket style-ish uh, pages. And it for me, it's a lot faster than regular scrapbooking or regular digital scrapbooking. Um and it's a, it's a lot more like Kim was saying, it's a lot more of those uh, words and memories and less of the fluff, I guess. Because <laughs> I'm a fluff. I, when I when I did digital scrapbooking, I put a lot of fluff. I mean, a lot of elements and, <laughs> you know, all that good stuff. And it's fun and it's really cute to me still. I still look at those pages and love them. But it's a little more streamlined way to document. I mean, I still, I still find myself putting a lot of the little doodads and things in because I can't help it. So that's why I call it pocket-ish because I don't really stick to exact pockets. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Am I yeah. describing that good? Yep. Well, yeah. yeah. I uh, printed out a whole – well, I had Person Kitty Prints print out a whole bunch of pocket – of your Project Mouse cards. Mm -hmm. And my kids have used them because I have photos that I printed up as well. And good. Yeah, they've used them and done quite a few pages. My kids – I just leave them – leave them out for my kids and they can grab their photos and uh, the project life and project mouse supplies whenever they want and just start working on stuff. And they've had fun. It's been fun to see, you know, my little six year old's own handwriting yeah, and, and writing down her own little memories of um, she <laughs> radiator Springs racers. She, <laughs> I hate this ride more than, and it, <gasps> yeah, just, she did not like that ride at all. That's so funny. <laughs> and it was like, this is the worstest ride ever, ever, oh. ever. And <laughs> See, that is so cute. Cause someday she will look back on that and laugh yes. and think, oh my gosh, that's just hilarious. It's exactly. the worstest ride. <laughs> yeah. I was dying. I thought this is, this is perfect right here. That's so cute. Perfection. So we have, um, autograph like sets of cards that you can print out and use for an autograph book we have uh, there's we have like a princess themed edition where you can do all your princess memories there's all kinds of stuff there's so i'll planning, link up actually i have everything. a label on my blog for project mouse so i'll link up to the label that 
that links up to all the Project Mouse yeah. articles that I have. Um, and then Krista has one as well, so I'll link up to hers. But yeah, we sort of are obsessed with Project Mouse. And since I started doing Project Mouse, I really am struggling to go back to regular traditional scrapbooking. I really love pocket style. And whenever I try to do a normal page, I really struggle. I'm, I'm hooked, I guess. I feel bad saying that because I feel like I'm – cheating on scrapbook I don't know I just it feels weird to say that or to admit it but I mean really all it is all especially the way you do it where you're doing it digitally all it is is scrapping in a grid which yes has been around forever and And I've done that before yeah just I I really love my grid and I love um having them because I've been conscious to as I scrap project mass I print them out fairly quickly Mm -hmm. and you know after I have a like three or four at a time. Cause I live like down the street from persnickety prints. So I just like, as soon as I have three or four, I print them and go pick them up and I put them in my album. And so I'm loving that too. Like having them out and in a book right away makes me really happy. And like Scarlett just the other day was watching Tink- a Tinkerbell movie or something and was talking all about Tinkerbell and all of a sudden is becoming obsessed. And I was like, do you remember when you met Tinkerbell at Disneyland? And she was like, no. And so I, cause she was really little. And so I, pulled it out. I, I had it printed. I was like, thank goodness I have this page printed. I don't have to like pull it up on the computer. I can yeah. like, here, look at this book. You know, it's like right here. You can pull it out like two seconds. So yeah. I was happy about that. So Cute. I'm, I'm all about printing quickly if you can. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm a loving, uh, just like, you like, it's a grid style or a yeah. pocket style scrapbook. So, which knowing Kim, I've known Kim since 2004, I think. Is that right, Kim? Is that when? That's when I went digital. So yeah. probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So knowing you and how you scrapbook, yeah, it would make perfect sense to me that you love pocket scrapbooking because yes. you are very linear and grid-like mm-hmm. when you scrap. Yeah. When I, um, I've been trying to do a few more regular layouts lately just because um, to help out the designers who I work for. And when I go, I'm pulling out my, I have templates made from my own layouts and I'm like, well, this is basically a a journal card and a photo right there. And that's how I already scrapbooked maybe a little bit more backgrounds, but I think what makes pocket scrapbooking and grid scrapbooking so popular now is we're we're getting products that are designed for it. Like last year when I was doing my my album, it really was Project Life because I was using Project Life branded because that's all we had, uh-huh. or I made my own. Um, and now it's there's just tons out there, so makes it a lot easier. Lots of options, yeah. for sure. Right. I think that's true. Sorry, for me at least, that's true for me at least. Like the more stuff that I see out there, the more I'm inspired to create. So yeah. Have you done other, besides digital scrapbooking and then pocket scrapping, have you done other stuff? With my Disney albums? Yeah. For documenting Uh, Disney? No. No. When I started documenting Disney, um, like probably our first trip we took as a married couple back in, gosh, 2006, um, that's right when I first started digital scrapbooking and so I immediately like wanted to digital scrapbook it because that's what I had started doing. So I am um, just really a traditional digital scrapbook pages and then my regular photo albums that I do when I get home. But then this next trip, I'm really excited because I'm going to do a smash book. Are you? So, yeah, I think, I mean, I'll still probably do, I mean, I for sure will still probably do my Project Mouse and Pocket Style scrapbook of it. But I also just want to do the smash book kind of while we're there. And right when we get back, because I did one for a really short little trip, not a whole smash book, but I did some pages um, when we went to Las Vegas just recently. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so fun. I can't wait to do Disney in the fall. So for sure, we're doing I'm doing a smash book and then also pocket style stuff. I don't know if we'll do paper pocket style where it's actual pockets, but probably just digital I don't know. I don't know because I really like the idea of handing cards to like Josh and stuff and having him write on them. And I don't know. All the memories and pockets for your receipts and stuff too. Yeah. 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 So maybe a little bit of both, maybe a little digital and a little. You certainly could mix it up. You certainly could do your, you know, your pocket 
style layouts, digital layouts, print the whole thing and put it in a 12 by 12 sheet yeah. protector next to an actual pocket page protector with pockets. Yeah, that's a good option. And I love that because, you know, I always think, okay, if I'm going to do something, and I love this about you, Kim, is that you are willing, you like try a lot of things. Like you try different ideas and you don't think, okay, all my Disney albums have to be the same. And sometimes I get in that mindset where I'm like, all my Disney albums should be in 12 by 12 books, you know, like they all lined up on the shelf. Yeah. And so I'm like, who cares? Like, let's do whatever feels good. Like Kim said, like whatever feels good, whatever, because that's really what you're going to end up completing and being successful mm-hmm. at is something that inspires you and that you're into and not something that you're doing. About. Like, yeah. And the more forced it is, the less you, the less likely <laughs> that you'll finish it, you know? Right. So. Okay, so one of the ways that I've um, – I love making photo books. Love them. Yeah, yeah. So much. and But I haven't ever finished a whole Disney photo book until recently. And I've started doing some posts. I've got several posts lined up over the next little while. Um, all about photo book, Disney photo books and different fun things that you can do with your Disney photo books. And I'm so excited to get even more photo books done because they're super fast, super easy. You can use digital scrapbook supplies if you want in them at Adorama Picks. They, you know, you can upload your PNG files and they keep the transparency there and everything. Uh, but you don't have to take the time to learn software if you don't want to, which I think is appealing to a lot of people that want something to document their trips, want something that's quick and easy, but yeah. do, you know, don't want to have to take the time to learn the software. Mm-hmm. So I loved doing that with my, this last photo book that I did with my sisters and my trip last October, it's been almost a year. And so it was a lot of fun. I, a couple of the fun things that I did that, I can't wait to be able to do again was I downloaded park maps from the Disney websites and used them as the inside covers because the Adorama picks, you can customize the inside of your covers, you know, just right where you open it up. And so I did Mm -hmm. the, the park maps there. I also used QR codes and embedded some, well, yeah, embedded videos, YouTube videos that went along with the photos that we took. Cause you know, we did, we did a lot of video on that trip more so than fun. Yeah. More than I'd ever done on a trip before. And so we were, and then we would take some photos too, like with the characters, my sister would video me and my interaction with the characters. And then we'd hurry and take a photo, get the autograph. And so then I was able to put all of those on one page in the photo book with the QR code. So do you just use their like set up grids or how, how are you doing it on this book that I did? I've done it lots of different ways, but this book that I did with them with, or just recently with Adorama picks with my sisters and my Disney trip, I did a customized book where I was able to customize my cover and everything else. But then they have layouts where you can just drag the layout over and drop it onto your page and you can sort through all of the different layouts that they have based on photos how many photos you want to put on that page. Mm -hmm. And then you can just drag and drop your photos to those photo spots and you can customize it. There were some that I took a layout that they had dropped it on the page and then resized the photo spots. Oh, you can do that. You can do that. Uh huh. Oh, wow. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. There's a lot of customization that you could do. So on this photo book that I did with my, this past trip, I went in and added all the photos and then I went in and added, uh, background paper, digital scrapbooking papers to the background. And then I added some PNG files too, that were, you know, word art and different things like that and had them on top of the photos and the QR codes as well. They, Adorama Picks, I worked with them on the QR code stuff because we had a really hard time getting the QR codes to show up in the book. And we found out that the website I was using to generate the QR codes said that it was a high resolution file when I downloaded it and put it in Photoshop, the resolution said it was fine, but somewhere between there and putting it on the book, the resolution didn't work out. Hmm. So, um, Adorama picks because of that Adorama picks has added a QR code generator into their photo book machine cool. software stuff because of you. Yeah. 
wow, <laughs> fancy. <laughs> yeah. And it's really cool because you just go in, they have an area, um, on their, on the site and you just go in and click on images. I think it is. There will be a tutorial on, on the capturing magic site that tells you exactly how to do it, but you can go in and add different photo boxes or text boxes or anything that you want, customize them, change the sizes, all of that to a layout. And in there also is a QR code and you just drag that and drop it onto your page and insert, paste the link into the box and then click on generate the QR code. You can also change all of the colors They change the foreground color and the background color on the QR code so that it matches your layout of everything that you have going on on the page. Yeah. And you can even use the little color picker to select colors from your photos if you want. Pretty cool, cool. stuff. So cool. Yeah. Very cool. <laughs> yeah. So that's w- kind of where I am right now. I'm doing lots of photo books and really enjoying it a lot for my yeah. Disney albums because it's it's going to make it so that I can get them done super fast. That's where I am. Same place you are, Britt. I want to be able to get them done quickly and have those memories down before they're totally forgotten Mm -hmm. and finding a method to do that. That makes you happy is the key. Totally. I think. Awesome. Yeah. So, okay. Did, did you guys have any other methods that you wanted to share before we move on into picks? Um, no, I think that's everything I've done. And I mean, We've talked about all the things I actually want to do. So (laughs) I don't know. I think that's everything. Yeah. It'll, it's going to be interesting to see what people decide is the best way for them to be able to document these memories. And we also have on capturing magic on our team there, Stephanie Haining, who's been on the show before, and she has lots of really great paper scrapbooking ideas and she's posting once a month on capturing magic as well. So if paper scrapbooking makes your heart sing, then we got some stuff for you there too. Yeah. Okay. Let's move on into picks with pixie dust. Britt. Well, now I sort of want to change mine because I realize it has nothing to do with what we're talking well, about. You don't today. need to. It doesn't have I to. I know. <laughs> I know. But I always feel like once we get into it, then I'm like, oh, it would be so great if it had to do with what we're talking about. But whatever. Okay. Yeah. So there's know. this new, <laughs> there's this new game. It's an app for your iPhone called Where's My Mickey? Have you seen it? <sighs> yes. I've finished all the levels. You did? Okay. It's so cute. It's 99 cents and it's like the Where's My Water or the Where's My Perry game, but it's Mickey Mouse and it is so adorable. It is. It's that new style. I think that there's a new Mickey Some Mouse shorts. cartoon, uh-huh. right? Yeah. Yeah. That On the Disney Channel. That, that It's the same style as that. And it's so cute and such cute little sounds and clips and characters. Anyway, it's really fun and cute. And I am picking that as my pick and I'm not even like a big phone game person, but Josh showed this to me and he actually pulled up a YouTube video and showed me like the game in action. And I was like, okay, that's really fun. And Scarlett loved it. And like, she asked, she saw me pulling it up for my pick today. Like I pulled up my link early and she saw it and she was like, Oh, my Mickey game. I watched my Mickey game. I was like, (laughs) Well, I guess because we watched the YouTube video of it, I'm like, uh, okay. <laughs> so it's really adorable. So 99 cents can't beat that. Yeah. It, it's a lot of fun. And I'm not, I don't play games on my phone at all. Not at all. Yeah, I don't but I downloaded that one. And like I said, I finished all the levels. I'm going to have to go buy some more. Even I like did, all the bonus levels and everything? I did buy two more. Yeah, I unlocked some more levels, and then I did buy two more levels. But they're all done. So I got to figure out what I need to do to either <laughs> unlock more or... <laughs> That's awesome. I'm going to have to repeat because it's a lot of fun. It's, it's very addictive. Yeah, it's cute. Is good or bad, yeah. Okay, Kim, do you have a pick? I do. I picked, um, my most recent camera bag. My kids got me a new camera bag for mother's day. It's by Hey Bub designs on Etsy. And, um, it's just, it's what I'm taking to the parks next year, even though I have already have a perfect Disney bag, but, um, it's very lightweight. It's very soft. Um, and it's not too big. Like I have a Joe tote, which is a camera bag, a professional camera bag. And it's so huge. And this one is just big enough for my camera, which is, I think we've talked about before. I have a point and shoot, but it's bigger. It's more the size of a DSLR. 
Um, mm-hmm. And so it, it's padded on both sides and there's um, Velcro, I don't know, pads. I don't know if that's the right word, um, but they, to like, um, Cushions. you put one, yeah, you put one in front and one behind the camera and then there's still room for my keys and my car max and tickets and things. It's, I mean, not a lot of room, just enough room. So, um, that's, and it's handmade and I'm a big supporter of handmade. So, yeah. Which one did you get? I just, I just pulled up your pick here. I want to, I want to know which one you have. Um, my kids actually picked it out for me and it is a, I don't think it's on there anymore. It's a, um, a aqua chevron and then the print on the body of the bag is kind of green and orange and aqua. It's just really me. So they did a great job and they totally surprised. I told them I I liked the look of that bag, but I didn't think they'd ever ordered it. And my son got on Etsy and ordered it for me and handled the whole thing. I know. It's nice to have teenagers, so. (laughs) (laughs) Adorable. That is adorable. I love it. Okay, my pick is actually a post. Uh, It was something I found on Pinterest, and when I tapped through it, it went to touringplans.com on their blog, and it's a post all about Park Plugged in the Magic Kingdom is what it is. And it has a huge list of where you can find outlets. Nice. In the Magic Kingdom. Yeah. I was actually surprised. I'm like, wow, this is (laughs) – someone really went into a lot of effort to find (laughs) their detailed list of where exactly – it's like the Cheshire Cafe. It says the plug hair is actually on the left-hand side of the building near the phones and the restrooms. It can be a little high traffic here, but I see people charging here often. I mean, awesome. detailed instructions on how yeah. <laughs> the different... It's not just like a list. It's like yeah. here's where all the places are. Yeah. And, and, let me, and here's about where, what it's like there. <laughs> yes. And so if you need a little more privacy for your charging time or whatever, go put, you know, if you need nap time while you're charging, whatever, this is where you can go. It's... Uh-huh. Oh. It's a great thorough list. So that is my pick. That's awesome. I have a, I, I can't even remember which app I have that has a list in it of Dis, it has I for Disneyland, what, you know, where there are plugs. And even, even if I don't really need one, I, for some reason, I always find myself reading through those because it makes me so interested because I'm like, Ooh, where's a plug around here? <laughs> like, just because it's so random to see a plug yes. where you could actually plug in your phone if you needed to. I'm always like on the lookout, even if I don't really need it. <laughs> it's the truth. And you know, oh. before I got my new Trent charger, so a year ago when I was in the parks testing the app, um, the capturing magic apps, my battery was being drained like crazy. And I had another yeah. portable charger, but it just didn't hold the power of my new Trent. And so my sister and I were always constantly on the looks, look for outlets where we could sit and charge. And because we knew about three or four in the afternoon, we were going to be needing a charge. Yeah. Yeah. So it's good, good information to have if you, if you don't have an external battery, Good, good information to have. <laughs> yep. yep. But get an external battery too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there are, I think they have a park plugged um, article about that, about external probably. batteries and stuff. Probably. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. I There are some people that just are like, I am not going to take get an external battery for my phone. I just don't want to use it that much that I have to have one. Okay. <laughs> They're the same people that are sad when their phone dies. You just need the camera part of it, if anything else. You don't have to be checking email (laughs) when you're at the parks, but for the camera. Yep. And the Capturing Magic iPhone apps, hello. So, okay, let's go around and remind our listeners and our new listeners. Let's tell them where they can find us. So, Britt? I am at BritishDesigns.com, and that's British with two Ts, and that's where you can find my digital scrapbook shop where I sell digital scrapbook um, products and all the Project Mouse stuff we talked about on the show today, plus a lot of other good stuff. Um, There's also links there to go to my blog, uh, my gallery, all the other places I'm at. So, um, and yeah, just... Well, let's see. I don't, when this show comes out, this is old news, but my recent, my most recent kit that I released is called Cars Rule and it's all inspired by Cars Land. Yay. So, yeah. 
Super excited. cute. Thanks. I love the cacti and all that fun <laughs> stuff in there. It was, it, well, we wanted it, I wanted it to be more of that kind of desert radiator yeah. springs kind of feel more than just like a race car yeah. kit. But the good thing about it is like a lot of people I've seen have scrapbook just like their kids playing with cars. And so it kind of works for both. But it does for sure. Yeah. So that's what's new there. Okay, Kim. I am at documentlifenow.com. And it's just my blog. I got recipes and stories and pictures and Disney. Yep. And albums. Yes. Lots of vacation albums. Yep. Yes. Always good uh, stuff. You always post good stuff. You do. Oh, it's a good blog. You. Everyone should read it. <laughs> I agree. It has my endorsement, my seal of approval. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Okay, uh, I am Steph, and you can find me at CapturingMagic.me, where we are posting all about creating and capturing magic at the Disney parks. You'll also find the Capturing Magic iPhone apps there, and let's see, I'm at the Daily Digi as well. If you're interested in learning about digital scrapbooking, that's a great place to start. We also have the best deal in digital scrapbooking, where you can get over $50 worth of digital scrapbook supplies for $7.50 a month. And that's all I'm working on. Working on uh, lots of programming stuff with my with my programmer for uh, the Capturing Magic iPhone apps and for the Daily Digi. It's all good. Fun stuff. Cool. So that's it. Okay, thank you. Girls, I appreciate it. Yeah. And we will see you next time where we will be capturing magic. <laughs>